This episode brought to you by G.I. Joe War on Cobra, the free download game for both Android and iOS devices where you can play as Joe or Cobra. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. We see patches all the time in video games. A big title is coming out with a lot of hype and once it's released, it seems unfinished. Thankfully though, a patch is released sometime later to fix it all up. Sometimes patches are released even if the game seems fine. There's several VR games that I think are perfect the way they are, but suddenly an update is added and the graphics are different or other major elements are altered. While this could be the subject of its own video, I want to talk about how a very similar practice is starting to be done with movies. Now anyone who knows cinema knows that movies are changed all the time, whether it's before a release, after a release, or sometimes even years later. The past few years though, as computer technology has not only advanced, but we've relied more on it, changes in film have become more unique. There's two examples that have happened recently that seem different than other changes we've had in the past. One is with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. When the teaser came out, the backlash against it, particularly what Sonic looked like, was so strong they pushed back the movie's release date to completely change his look, attempting to make him look more faithful to the game's design. The other example is with Cats. With so many people complaining how freakishly ewy it looked, a new version of the film was released claiming to have made the CGI effects look better. At first people thought this meant making them appear more like the original design similar to Sonic. But it turns out it just meant taking some scenes that looked awkward and fake and touching them up a bit so they looked awkward and real. The fact that the makers think these changes will save these train wrecks is entertaining enough, but I'm more fascinated that we're in a time that these changes can be done at all. The reason we're not shocked these kind of changes and patches can be done in games is because it's all coding and programming. Yes, it takes time, but it's all done in one realm, the computer. Films like Cats and Sonic are a mix of live action and computer. And this is the first time we're seeing that main characters can be completely transformed even before the movie comes out. So the question is, are more of these movie patches on the way, and if so, is it a good thing? While many have voiced appreciation for trying to improve a film based on existing properties, others have concerns. Cats, for example, has become one of the most celebrated bad films in recent years. There's so much talk about how the movie bombed hard at the box office, but if the reactions from people who have seen it are any indication of the future, it's gonna be just fine. I can see tons of people viewing this trying to experience the madness the same way they watch The Room or Troll 2. Hell, maybe a kind of Rocky Horror Picture Show screening might be in the near future. I can totally see people watching it, laughing, and shouting things at the screen. But it looks like we may not be able to see it in its full disjointed glory anymore. I saw this movie before the changes were made, and I can think of several moments where the effects were astoundingly uncomfortable. More than just the design, it was the texture and movement in several scenes. It added to the fun of how mind-fucking it was. But now it looks like that version might be gone forever. Don't get me wrong, the film will continue to delightfully horrify based on its other maddening merits, but cleaning up the effects of cats is like cleaning up the effects of Santa and the ice cream bunny. The mistakes are part of why we love it. The Sonic the Hedgehog movie got criticism from its own cast about the changes made. Jim Carrey said, I don't know quite how I feel about the audience being in on the creation of it while it's happening. Who knows what that's going to turn into? I believe in auteurs and I believe in creatives. As far as something like a Sonic character, that's something people have a sense of ownership from their childhood. So of course they're going to get involved if they can. We'll see if it's a good thing or a bad thing. While judging from the trailers, I don't see this as the best example of great auteurs or creatives, I can't act like I don't know what he's talking about. The Sonic redesign looks great, more expressive and livelier than the original. 
but the change happened before we could see how the original would have been utilized in the film. And let me emphasize, it's extremely unlikely that it would have worked. But to demand a change even before we can know for sure does seem a little odd. Imagine if when Michael Keaton was cast as Batman, the filmmakers listened to the angry masses and somehow changed the actor after the film was done shooting. I mean, yeah, I know that's not possible now, but we're getting to a point where maybe it will be. If we listened to fans before the movie was released, we would have lost one of the best, if not the best, Batmans we've gotten in cinematic history. Again, that's very unlikely that's what would have happened here, but kind of similar to Cats, I don't think that's going to save much. If anything, I feel like it's going to take away. The film still looks like Hop crossed with the Woody Woodpecker movie, so I personally welcome all the bad you can squeeze into this to make it entertainingly awful. Creepy human teeth and all. But like I said, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't know for sure. Maybe it will make things better. Someone who rarely makes his films better the more he alters it, though, is George Lucas. He might be one of the best examples of why not to change scenes after a movie is released. In the 90s, years after the Star Wars films were owned by many on video, he released his trilogy with all new effects on the big screen. Nowadays, this may seem like nothing, but the idea of going back and using modern technology to update a film in this way was kind of mind-blowing. Nobody had seen something like that before, at least not on that big a scale. Despite some of the changes being mind-boggling even to this day, people were okay with this idea. There was only one problem, though. These were going to be the only versions of Star Wars you could see from here on out. Lucas refused to release the original unaltered cuts on DVD or Blu-ray, acting as if they never existed. Had the original and updated versions been available, I don't think people would have had as many problems with the changes made. But they're not. He's erasing film history for so many people that now aren't allowed to view what inspired so many filmmakers. These are changes or patches that seem to be backfiring. Spielberg apparently had the same idea with E.T. Replacing the timeless puppet effects with what I can only describe as the Illumination logo CGI dick. He also edited out the FBI agent's guns because he thought that was too scary for kids. Got it, the cuddly corpse of your lifeless hero? Fine. But bad guys with guns? <gasps> no child ever witnesses that! Thankfully, Spielberg did the smart thing and released both versions so that people could choose. But other films aren't so lucky. Lion King, no, the one people like, has several differences on DVD and Blu-ray despite them advertising it's the theatrical cut. Now these changes are minor, but still odd. If we went back to Snow White or Pinocchio and started changing things years later, wouldn't that be kind of like messing with history? Updating clarity is one thing, that's art restoration, but this is art alteration. The version I saw on the big screen I technically can't see again as it was shown without these updated patches. At least not on DVD or Blu-ray, at least not that I can find. I suppose I can still watch it on VHS, but it's practically an extinct way of watching movies now. Now with that said, some patches, especially from Disney, do make more sense than others. You'll see what I'm talking about. Yo, jump! Ronnie Sergeant Slaughter here, Joe and Cobra are back in G.I. Joe! War on Cobra! Will you join the Joes and fight for justice, or will you seek world domination with Cobra? The choice is yours! G.I. Joe War on Cobra is a free download and out now for both Android and iOS devices. American flags! And G.I. Joe fans, we're excited to show you more about the latest title from the good people at D3GO. Whether you're a fan of the classic animated series, the iconic toy line, comics, or all of the above, G.I. Joe Joe, War on Cobra has something for everyone. You can see the lights in my sunglasses! It has a massive roster featuring the most beloved and infamous heroes, villains, and vehicles featured in the series. You can guess which character I like to play with. 
the Baroness. I like her accent. Once you've chosen your side, players will be introduced to the game's mechanics via Roadblock for Joes or Baroness for Cobra. You'll learn how to manage your base, units, vehicles, and engage in battles to help you get a feel for managing your troops. Mr. T is a person! As you continue with the single-player campaign missions, more options for reinforcing your army with additional units, heroes, and vehicles begin to open up. I like pudding! But that's only the beginning. G.I. Joe War on Cobra also features player versus player and ranked leaderboard. Giraffes have long necks! You'll need to fight hard for your faction. Build out and defend your base strategically, and master the art of directing troops to conquer your foes. And in no time, you will be an expert on making attacks from air, land, and sea. I recommend pushing the button. And while you're here, we have a special in-game gift from D3GO. As a token of our appreciation for checking out G.I. Joe War on Cobra, we're giving away two free characters for all new players to help reinforce your army. Joes can look forward to picking up a free bazooka, the G.I. Joe Missile Specialist, while Cobra followers can add Missile B.A.T., the battle android trooper, to their squad. In the meantime, don't forget that knowing is half the battle. Check out the description below or head to d3go.com slash nostalgiacritic. Do it, or I'll put you in an E.D. B.D. D.D. Bay. That's d3go.com slash nostalgiacritic to download G.I. Joe War on Cobra and receive your free gift for your mobile device. Yo, Joe! stand by there should be few to no changes when digitally updating movies as they should be seen in the original context of when they came out. We're always changing, always evolving, so it makes sense to acknowledge that times change and it can be for the better. However, some changes made over the years are pretty easy to understand. I never knew until years later that in Fantasia there were black racial stereotypes serving the white centaurs. Holy shit is that uncomfortable! Usually Disney and Warner Brothers properties that had racist depictions from the past had intros from film historians and celebrities explaining that they were a product of the time. That they were wrong then and wrong now, but acting like it didn't happen is more damaging than rewriting it out of history. Concerned parents might use this opportunity to talk about the way things were many years ago and just how far we've come since then. To accurately reflect a part of our history that cannot and should not be ignored. With that said, this cut of Fantasia is not on any DVD or Blu-ray, nor is the original version of Aladdin where Arabian Nights includes the lyric, they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. Where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face, it's barbaric, but hey, it's home. While I feel like these versions should exist somewhere for historical preservation, it is hard not to agree with these changes. I mean, the Aladdin one isn't too bad because they're trying to build up It's a Tough Place in an over-the-top way, like making the Old West look even more aggressive than it was. I get that. It's a comedic cartoon. But the Fantasia one? I don't know. How do you explain that to a kid? It feels especially dirty, and something about leaving that one out feels right. So as we're seeing, the issue is definitely subjective. Sometimes the biggest patches in a movie isn't about what you take out, but rather what you leave in. Right after 9-11, a lot of movies coming out had shots of the World Trade Center, planes, airport security, and all of it suddenly needed a facelift. Zoolander has become a comedy staple for many over time, but back then, it was the center of much controversy because it digitally erased the World Trade Center. Now, nobody talks about it, but back then, it was like a huge insult. In hindsight, I can't blame them that hard. I mean, they just wanted people to laugh at their movie, take away their pain. And seeing the two towers in the background might make people uncomfortable and take away from that goal. But the news that spread about erasing them did the exact opposite, causing people to demand any scenes with the two towers be left alone because it reminded everyone of what a proud American structure it was and that it should never be forgotten. Spider-Man definitely took note by changing up the poster with the World Trade Center, but leaving it in other scenes of the movie. I still think the big reveal of Spider-Man in the film was the famous spider web between the two towers in the trailer, and this was cut out. 
I mean, it's in the film for a second, but Spider-Man never got a big reveal of him in the costume, and this would have been perfect. Again, I can't confirm this is what they did, it's only a theory, but it seems pretty likely. One of the biggest changes to a film around that time wasn't talked about at all. In Lilo and Stitch, remember the big spaceship chase in the climax of the film? Looks a little familiar, doesn't it? Yep, originally the ending focused on a plane flying through the city, but after 9-11 happened, they reanimated the whole thing so that people wouldn't feel, well, uncomfortable. People still love this movie, even with the scene changed and not drawing attention to it, like the media did with Zoolander, seemed to help it out in both the long run and short run. So as we're quickly seeing, there's no concrete rules as to what should be altered and what shouldn't. With director's cuts and extended versions released all the time, it almost seems like we crave different versions of our beloved classics. Peter Jackson, when filming pickup shots for the extended cut of Return of the King, brought up how almost pointless it was seeing how they just won the Oscar for Best Picture. If it already won Best Film of the Year, why are they adding to it? Well, one of the reasons is because people have a choice of which one they can see. When movies are released in different countries, some cultural differences have to be updated. Broccoli in Japan, for example, is not seen as gross to kids, but green peppers are. Regardless, you can still purchase the American or Japanese version of Inside Out whenever you like. But different versions of Star Wars, Cats, Sonic, and Justice League? You can't. With that said, some filmmakers definitely know the importance of getting the right version out. My favorite film of all time, Brazil, had a very public battle about getting the original cut out, instead of the studio releasing a shorter, and I think by accounts of every human being that's ever seen it, shittier version of the film, known as the Love Conquers All edition. This version, almost as a joke, was released on the Criterion edition with a commentary on why it sucks so hard. The original cut was released after its director hosted his own screenings and eventually won the Los Angeles Film Critics Award for Best Picture. It is interesting to see the inferior cut when comparing it to the original, but just imagining that this may have been the only version we got is pretty horrifying. Even the masterpiece 2001 A Space Odyssey had 19 minutes cut out after Kubrick did a limited release of the film. He said it was for pacing reasons, and if you know the slow pacing of the film, that's kind of funny. But it's strange to think even after a groundbreaking film has been released, a director can go back in and change stuff himself. It's not always the big bad studio trying to keep the good artist down. You could argue that stage shows have been doing this for years. Broadway often has previews acknowledging the show might not be where they want it to be yet. Hell, Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark went through 183 previews. And according to most reports, they still didn't get it right. So as you can see, there's a lot of different angles to come at this from. The idea of a film being altered from what it was originally intended sounds shitty and like it's selling out, but it's done all the time, both before and after it's released. Sometimes it makes it great, sometimes it damages it, sometimes what damages it is also what makes it great. We're turning more and more to existing properties with a following, and anything with a following has an opinion on what they like and don't like about it. So my guess is we're gonna see a lot more of these film patches. CGI is advancing so fast and it's utilized so much in film that it's easy to see more instances like this on the horizon. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, like the examples I've listed over so many years of film, it's just a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. What I think is important for filmmakers is keeping in mind what's best for the feel of the film. Fixing a few effects on cats clearly isn't going to change anyone's mind on it, but changing the look of Sonic has already changed several people's minds on it. For a movie they haven't even seen yet. And while I will miss the A-bomb of horrendousness we could have had, it's hard not to appreciate that they are trying to please the fans. Whatever people will think of the film, most people can agree they at least got one thing right. As much as I've talked shit about George Lucas, he did quote a very famous saying, that being, films are never completed, they're abandoned. And there is a lot of truth to that. There's been tons of unmade movies because either too many things went wrong or somebody never got the version they were proud enough to release. Orson Welles was guilty of this several times, even with his last movie. Film is a collaborative effort, with tons of people working on each one, so it's no shock that there's never been objectively a perfect film. 
Even the greatest masterpieces have something that was a little off or doesn't make sense, and what may be seen as amazing to you might be seen as shit to someone else. There always has been and always will be pros and cons of advancing technology with art. For everything you gain, you're always gonna lose a little something. I guess if film is destined to have more changes in the future based on audience reaction, the challenge is going to be striking that balance between what the storyteller wants to say and what the audience is willing to listen to. Entertainment can't exist without somebody entertaining and somebody being entertained. The hope is both having respect and trust of the other to keep the imagination always hungry, yet constantly fed. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, sadly, if you've been watching the news, you know the Australian fires are still going on. Uh, that's why, again, we're going to do uh, the Australian Red Cross. Uh, the link, again, is in the description. Uh, if you've done any research on them, you know they're so good at what they do. It, it's the Red Cross. I mean, it's like everybody knows Red Cross. And uh, they have a certain section, if you go to their website, uh, dedicated uh, for the fires uh, that are still going on. So um, even... Uh, uh, guy, even when this is finally uh, gotten under control, you know, it is still still continue to check them out. Red Cross has just done so much good over the years, and it's just a wonderful organization. I'm sure you can volunteer at it as well. Uh, you, you've heard of it. You know the good they do. Please continue to support it, especially uh, during such a rough time. So uh, thank you so much, and I will see you next week. Take care.